going on, my friends? Welcome back to the ant room of my antics. You know, I had a lot going through my mind of exactly what this video would entail. I thought about maybe a feeding video, or talking about some of the new queens we got in to come, but after going through my memories of where exactly I wanted to be, this week's video is going to be all about the care of semi-claustral species. As you've probably already learned, semi-claustral species have a little bit of a different care when you're starting out with them. They need a little bit of extra love to get them the push they need to their first nanitics and finally into a colony, which otherwise you would treat them normally. But up until that point, certain species need different things to guide them down their path of success. And we know in the end, after learning these techniques, that we'll all have successful colonies to come. Let's now jump into the first tactics that I would use personally to start learning about and applying to your ant keeping at home. To start things off on an even foot and make sure we get a good idea of what we're talking about, let's first take a look at the Avengers, our Camponatus discolor colony during their feeding hour. Even though this is a fully claustral species, you can tell that these ants are ecstatic to finally have their protein offering put in a reachable area. You see, these worker ants do not benefit from protein at all, but they know that it is so extremely important to make sure their queen and the mature brood get it to continue their colony. The queen needs the proteins that her workers bring her to produce more eggs and to keep her healthy, and the mature pupa and larva need it to make sure their metamorphosis goes correctly and they become adult ants themselves. Without these weekly offerings, these ants would most certainly become sluggish, inactive, and eventually die. Food to your ant colonies, which would be water, sugar, and protein are essential for an ant colony's life, just like how a human needs water and food to survive. Now fully claustral species, obviously, when the queen is new, can fast without any food, no protein, no sugar, until her first nanitics arrive, and even longer than that, until she has foraging workers. But semi-claustral queens are on a totally different page, and they have life a lot harder than these little ladies do right here. Here's a very special colony that I was raising specifically for this video. Here are beautiful, gorgeous, red and black Pogomermix californicus, otherwise known as Pogomermix discolor or bicolor. These species are actually known as foragers and are known to be quite aggressive as seen here. It is their feeding time right now and as you can see they are very excited to finally have another protein snack. If you'll kindly look closer at these little ladies' body, you can tell that their thorax, which is their back, and their abdomen, which is their back stomach, is relatively small and slim. Because they're built like this, they're classified as semi-claustral, and they definitely need food, even when there's just a lone queen on the scene. She needs no introduction, but for those of you who do not know her, this is the official Miantix Trapjaw Queen, otherwise known as Odontomachus Brunus. This little girl has been in our care for about a month now, and when we first showed her on the uh, YouTube channel, she had a small pile of eggs. Since then, her eggs have turned into mature pupa and larva, and substrate has been added. Trapjaw brood are very interesting for the reason that they use the scraps and the particles from the substrate to actually help weave their cocoons to eventually become adult workers. This species of ant is extremely semi-claustral and definitely needs uh, a lot of food offerings on a weekly basis. This little lady here normally gets fed twice a week and as you can see here she's feeding her brood as we watch her. She will actually rip pieces of the protein offerings and literally put them right next to the brood so they have a chance to eat as well. 
The last time we saw our trap jaw queen, all she had was a small pile of eggs. But since then, she now has mature larvae and pupa that need substrate to help them weave their cocoons and eventually become workers. I think it's amazing and magical that we get to see her hand a piece of protein to her little brood. Let's talk a little bit about care and setup for semi-claustral species now, including how to add substrate correctly. With a little bit of help from our Myrmica rubra here, which is the European fire ant that invasively invaded the United States over the last hundred years, though she's not that active right now, I'm sure that she'll be happy to be fed and have some substrate to brag about. We're going to start off by adding some sand to her test tube, which will also be treated as her outworld until she has enough workers to be officially put into a nest. When it comes to adding substrate, you never want to add too much. She will basically move around this sand of hers until she is satisfied with where it is, and normally after that she will move it again until she feels that it's the exact way that she wants it to be. Even after adding this small amount, you can tell that she's getting excited and she doesn't really know what's going on. But she's going to be very pleased to find this little roach baby offering that we're about to give her. Ah yes, another semi-claustral successful feeding complete. After adding a small drop of pure northern clover honey for her, she'll have everything that she needs for the next couple of days. Like I said, I like to feed all of my semi-claustral species twice a week, and I like to give them different kinds of feeders and different kinds of sugar as well. For example, right now I'll be adding a little bit of honey, which could startle her, but in a couple days I might add a small piece of pear. Another really important tip to remember is, anything that you add, make sure to remove two to three days later. This is so it doesn't become moldy and infect the test tube. If you know anything about mold, once it starts to produce spores, it spreads quickly, and without checking it, it could literally engulf the whole test tube and everything that she has, including her brood. If this was to happen, it would be a devastating, devastating, chaotic moment where you have to try to get her to start all over and it's not something you should look forward to. Long story short, instead of worrying about all this, just make sure you're a responsible ant keeper and remove the food two to three days later. Let's now zoom into this little lady and see what, what she got going on. Raising fully claustral queens and semi-claustral queens are quite similar. The main difference to remember is semi-claustral queens should be treated as if they already have workers and thought of as a colony instead of a lone queen. Adding substrate to your semi-claustral queen's test tubes or even connecting a small outworld so she can forage in it is definitely a great idea to keep her optimistic and look, uh, looking forward to what's to come. Lastly, always remember to check your queen's water. I can't stress this enough. Fully claustral queens, if they run out of water, it's bad, but they have reserves that they can keep themselves held by until you figure out that, that there's a problem with the water supply. But semi-claustral queens, they don't have that built into them. And if they run out of water, the next time they go to drink, it's empty. It could be later that day that they perished, never to return again. So those are the main hardships of a semi-claustral queen. I hope this guide helped, and I hope that you were amused to watch the Trap Jaws, the Pogamermix, and the Myrmica. 
I was really surprised that the, the trap jaw actually gave her pupa a chunk of the protein right in front of us. I wasn't expecting it, and behind the camera while I was talking, I was smiling. So I hope you guys found that as exciting as I did, and I hope you guys have a wonderful night. Remember, forever, happy ant keeping.